is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 honda crv courtesy of apple honda in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so this is officially the sixth generation of the honda crv and it has been completely redesigned for the 2023 model year and quite honestly I think it looks dang good. It didn't look bad before, but it looks really, really good now. I will say that. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering for ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2023 crv first one being ex starting at thirty one thousand one hundred and ten dollars sport hybrid for thirty two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars exl for thirty three thousand seven hundred and sixty and then the sport touring hybrid for thirty eight thousand six hundred dollars and i will say for the last trim level all-wheel drive does come standard but for the other trim levels front wheel drive is standard but you can get all-wheel drive by simply adding fifteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but so then as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are a couple different engine configurations available for the crv first one being the one that we have today which is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder this particular engine configuration belongs to the ex trim level and the exl we do have the exl with us here today power output comes in at 190 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 179 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt mpg numbers then coming in at 28 in the city 34 on the highway for the front wheel drive 27 city 32 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then you have the other power plant belonging to the hybrid configurations that one is a two liter inline four cylinder with two electric motors that one comes in at a combined 204 horsepower 247 pound feet of torque sent to front wheels or all wheels yet again through a cvt zero to 60 time for that one approximately 7.6 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 43 in the city 36 on the highway for the front wheel drive that is that is dang impressive and then 40 in the city 34 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel yet again but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our crv i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a little toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter and that will give you different drive modes including econ normal and snow and actually sport as well if you were to go with the hybrid trim level that's the only trim that's going to give you that sport driving mode but nonetheless adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sense sensitivity and quite honestly we are in normal driving mode right now and i can tell you guys the steering sensitivity is wonderful we'll get more into that a little bit later in the video but first thing i noticed i love it but so anyways now i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put this acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 honda crv here up to speed all right this literally looks like the perfect spot in three two one go baby little bit of turbo leg there it is <laughs> to get up on the upper rpms it really goes so not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway but like i said at the very beginning of that acceleration as you quite often find in turbocharged four cylinders there's a little bit of turbo lag but as long as you're up higher in the rpms that really is not going to be a problem so you're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.3 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.2 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in at 123 feet which is perfectly fine that's a pretty average number for the segment as far as braking feel goes since there's nobody behind us it's great honestly i love it it's definitely on the firmer side of things so the braking feel feels perfect on the crv i will say that a lot of suvs will give you looser kind of braking feels where you have to press down on the pedal a little bit harder to get it stopped but it's not the case i love the braking feel here in the crv the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back multi-link double wishbone type rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been great it's been perfectly fine on my short test drive here today so i definitely am not having any issues with the ride quality believe it or not steering feel is brilliant it's like mazda like you guys i absolutely love the steering feel on the honda crv it's weighted on the heavier side of things instantly points you in the direction that you want to go and the reason i'm emphasizing this so much is because a lot of times in suvs you find looser steering feels with not a whole lot of emotion but honda's kind of mo is really to be 
a driver's car, kind of like Mazda, I guess. I kind of put them in the same category, and that's definitely the case here in the CRV. You wouldn't expect it, because this is just, it's kind of like a family vehicle that you haul your kids in to get them to school and stuff, but the steering feel is quite brilliant. Like I said, heavier side of things, 100% on point, but that touching on cabin noise, I am going 36 miles per hour right now, and so far, it's honestly, it's been perfectly fine, so definitely no issues there for me. Then touching on visibility, 100% on point yet again. The rear headrests don't take up all that much room, and I can see perfectly fine out that back window, so no issues there. And rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come on the Sport Touring Hybrid trim level, so that's essentially gonna assist with forward visibility. Whenever the CRV detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you, so it's a big old convenience feature, kind of like automatic headlights so that's a big win there as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 honda crv all right here she is you guys the new 2023 honda crv finished in lunar silver metallic in case you were curious it looks pretty dang good this morning actually a very nice morning here in pennsylvania but again completely new look for 2023 crv definitely looks very much better than the previous generation. Not that that was a bad looking generation, but this looks just amazing. Very more masculine, I guess you could say so. Anyways, first thing I want to mention before we get started up front here is the VIN does start with the two, meaning this one is built in Canada. Always like to mention that for you guys now, but let's go ahead and start up front. Unique front fascia for the sport hybrid trim level. So it's going to look a little bit different than the uh, current look that you guys are looking at right now. So I wanted to mention that a little more aggressive. I'll put it that way. LED headlights to the sides do come standard for every single trim level across the board. So you got to love that added illumination at night, at least comparatively speaking to the good old halogens. LED daytime running lights also coming standard you do get the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night headlights will turn on automatically for you there but you also get automatic high beams for every single trim level across the board meaning if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams then another thing i just noticed it has dark housings around the headlights a lot of times uh, you'll find clear housing. So I do like the dark housing look because we do have a lot of black accents around this thing, including just uh, matte black on the front lip there. So do you like the look of that? And you do have active grill shutters up front as well. So they're going to open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. And you do have some front air curtains down to the corners there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. So again, completely new look up front. I am personally a big fan of it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so starting up top here gloss black roof rails will come standard on the sport trim so therefore we do not have those with us here today but chrome window surrounds will also come standard taking a look at the side mirrors then body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard unless you go with the sport hybrid trims then you're actually going to get gloss black finish to those side mirrors so i do want to emphasize that heated side mirrors do come standard as well with led integrated turn signals then as well so that's pretty cool then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch silver painted alloys for the ex trims that's what you guys of course are looking at right now 18 inch gloss black alloys then for the sport hybrid and then 19 inch gloss black alloys for the sport touring hybrid so pretty big differentiation there amongst the trim levels when it comes to the wheel setup and you got the matte black fender surrounds and side skirts as well but Again, that pretty much rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the CRV. All right, so we now since you are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Got some redesigned taillights that look dang good. I love the new look to them. The kind of Volvo-esque kind of actually, now that I think about it, kind of like a Volvo XC90 or something, but LED taillights, of course. So added illumination at night there. And then just below it all, you will find dual exhaust outlets across the board you will get chrome tips available for the sport trim levels however of course we just have the exl with us here today so they are simply tucked away but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip All 
Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the CRV, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate for the EXL trim level that we have today. Then if you were to go with that Sport Touring, it actually is a hands-free power tailgate. So there's a couple different ways to go ahead and open it. There is a button on the key fob itself. There's a button on the tailgate itself. You simply just press that rubberized button. It's going to automatically open up for you. Then there's actually a button to close it as well. And there's a button by the driver's side left knee in the driver's seat as well. But cool thing is this tailgate is very, very adjustable. One of the higher open opening tailgates and I emphasize that because I'm six feet tall and a lot of times I'll hit my head kind of or I have to bend down to kind of get out of there but this one opens up a good bit so I absolutely love that so for taller adults putting stuff in the cargo area that's a big win but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 39.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space there's a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 76.5 cubic feet that is very impressive for his class. I just want to mention that cargo lighting can be found back there, but it's LED cargo lighting. It's not your typical halogen bulbs that you usually will find on the competition. Again, big fan of that as well. Tie down makers back there. There's grocery bag hooks. There's actually a 12 volt power outlet I found back there as well, which you don't always find in SUV. So I like that. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you're actually going to find a spare tire, which again, I'm a big fan of because the alternative is uh, the fix a flat, which I'm not a big fan of. So I do like that. And there is some storage kind of around that you could probably put an ice scraper underneath there as well but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in in an extremely impressive 41 inches even that's a ton of space you guys for the class for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there typically you get around 39 inches for the class i'll put it that way rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard i like that rear usb charging ports for the sport hybrid trim levels therefore we don't have them today unfortunately there is rear ventilation though that does come standard back there so i do like that and honestly one thing i think it was missing was uh would have been nice to see some rear window sunshades back there i'm just saying but anyways then making our way up to the front seats 10-way power adjustable front seats with two-way power lumbar this is one of the first things i noticed as well extremely comfortable seating in this thing yes it has horizontal seams and vertical seams would have been better but still very adjustable power lumbar extremely adjustable power lumbar and quite honestly between the steering wheel and the seats it was incredible comfort when it comes to the seat comfort so anyways i'm going to continue here heated front seats do come standard on all trim levels cloth seating for the ex and sport hybrid leather seating for the exl and sport touring hybrid trims power adjustable passenger seat for the exl and sport touring again and memory settings again for the exl and sport touring for up to two different drivers found here on the driver's side door so then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped on all trim levels but the ex wanted to emphasize that and it will be heated on that sport touring trim level as well and the 10 and 2 grips are bolstered on the thicker side of things another reason i was a big fan of this steering wheel here but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your nice honda logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and that circular button that's going to be a remote start which by the way comes standard on every single trim level across sport so when it's a super cool day here in pennsylvania you simply just press that and it's going to automatically turn it on for you and warm up the vehicle before you get actually inside of it so i'm a huge fan of that and it is keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board so in this case all i'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that black and red engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there and so once started up gauges look good yet again seven inch digital gauge cluster kind of found on the left side of things kind of an analog setup to the right but it looks dang good and when you change up your driving mode it does a cool little kind of illustration of the drive mode that you switch it to so i was a big fan of that as well but tachometer is on your left and it pretty much has everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauge it just gives you your outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty and all that can be controlled by simply using the steering wheel mounted controls then so no issues there but then taking a look at overall interior quality a power moonroof actually comes standard on every single trim level across the board that surprised me usually don't find that on the bottom trim so big fan of that led interior lighting all trim levels across the board dual zone climate control all trim levels across the board so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there one thing about the dual zone climate control and the uh, climate control buttons in general it's kind of led backlit i think that's such a cool little thing they got going on there so it's kind of like uh, mercedes-benz puts ambient lighting around their climate control vents uh honda apparently is putting led backlit lighting around their climate control buttons so 
Usually you don't find that. I'm a big fan of that. Auto dimming rear view mirror for the EXL and touring trim levels. Wireless phone charger for the EXL and touring trim levels as well. And that's gonna be located just in front of the shifter here. But in addition to that, you do have a USB charging port, regular phone charging port, 12 volt power outlet. You do have an electromechanical parking brake just to the left of the shifter. You do have dual cup holders just behind that. And within the center armrest, actually a decent amount of storage in there. Well done, Honda. So I do like the kind of texturized finishes that are found just below the air vents here up front and also found on all of the doors. I was a big fan of that. I'm always a fan of texturized finishes. So I'm a big fan of that. Also the door handles. I like the design to the door handles. I know it's small, but it looks kind of like Lexus's Samurai sword door handles that they put in their vehicle. So I'm a big fan of that as well. Maybe it's because Honda is a Japanese company and they designed it that way. I don't know. But you do have an overhead sunglass holder that's going to come for all trim levels as well. And overall, I mean, it's kind of on the basic side. You do have some matte black plastic surrounding the shifter, also surrounding the window buttons on the doors. But honestly, it's perfectly fine for me. It gets the job done. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen because there's going to be a couple of them. Seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the EX and the Sport hybrid trims. But you will get a nine inch color touchscreen display for the EXL and the Touring. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You will get factory navigation system for that touring trim level. Of course, Honda has your cool little clock option where you can display a clock. I always like the looks of their clocks. They look kind of funky, but also you can check out your radio information, of course. And when it comes to the sound systems, there's several of them. Six speakers and 240 watts is going to come with the EX and Sport Hybrid. Then you're going to get an eight speaker sound system with 320 watts for the EXL that we have today. And then a 12 speaker Bose sound system for that Sport touring so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one that's 100 perfectly fine for me there's a ton of bass with that eight speaker sound system we have in the exl here so i would say for the exl and the sport touring you're definitely going to be perfectly fine i don't know how the other sound system is going to sound but Plenty of clarity, again, ton of bass for that eight speaker sound system that we have with us here today. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the CRV in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board with a few different views as well. So that's kind of cool, but not the most high definition rear view camera I've ever seen, but it'll definitely get the job done. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, let me first start by mentioning the uh, 2022 CRV is an IHS top safety pick. It hasn't been rated by IHS quite yet for 2022. 23 but typically the way it works is vehicles either get better or they stay the same so i wouldn't imagine it would no longer be an iihs top safety pick so i'll just put it that way front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist for collision warning lane departure warning traffic jam assist traffic sign recognition and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well. And a lot of times that's a feature you find on upper trim levels of other manufacturers, but it comes standard across the board here in the CRV. So I'm a big fan of that. And if you were to go with the EXL or Sport Touring, you're also gonna get front and rear parking sensors as well. So that's pretty cool. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the CRV, I do love the redesign. I think this thing looks dang good. Not that it didn't look good before, but it really looks good now. Both sound system availability is gonna be incredible, but the sound system in the EXL is plenty fine for me as well. So honestly, it's a really good sound system here. Tons of space for its class. 76 point whatever cubic feet is a good bit of space for its particular class. And that's something Honda has always kind of uh, beat the competition with is the cargo space um, for the segment. So big fan of that. I will say great MPGs on the hybrid as well. And uh, steering feel, 100% on point here in the uh, CRV. So big fan of the steering feel of this thing. Really, the only constructive criticism that I personally would think of that would be going through my mind, and it really isn't constructive criticism as much as it is just the unknown, which is the reliability. There's no longer a naturally aspirated engine option for the CRV. You either have the uh, hybrid configuration with two electric motors, or you have the turbocharged four cylinder that we have today both of which traditionally are not as reliable as a traditional naturally aspirated four cylinder. I know why Honda did it because they're looking for better fuel economy. I get that. But at the same time, Honda and Toyota traditionally for me has been known for reliability. And it makes me wonder what the reliability of the new CRV is going to be. I guess time will tell 
Let me know what you guys think of the CRV in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. <laughs>